The sun begins to peek through the gray clouds as the yachts speed through the misty drizzle. It's been an exciting race even before the starting shot rang out. The dark horse Scottish challenger Galatea, along with its colorful owners and their crew, defied odds when they raced off the starting line, quickly and easily taking the lead. That is, until it and the American defender Mayflower veer off course. Galatea slows, barely clearing a course buoy, and the spectatorships watching the race. It loses the lead and Mayflower overtakes it, rounding the famous Sandy Hook lightship marking the farthest point of the course. But in this moment of fierce competition, even as it's lost the lead, the yacht in the foreground looks ephemeral. The sails are illuminated as warm light beams through a cherry blossom pink pocket in the clouds. The vessel seems to stretch, reaching forward, and we can feel its speed and the intensity of the competition. This is the defining moment in the September 7, 1886 America's Cup race. Or so we thought. Reading, researching, recataloging. It might sound mundane, but it is anything but. Because within museums, this means learning, discovering, and growing. It means feeling just about every emotion as you chase down a lead, a fact, or a source to find the truth. Sometimes it means finding out that what you thought you knew about something was totally wrong. And yeah, it is frustrating. Sitting there with the pages scattered around you, a journal that looks like chicken scratch, a stack of books and about 15 tabs open. But that's where the beauty is. At the core of this mess of searching, questioning and consulting, there is tremendous opportunity, a chance to read, research and recatalog, to find out something new and start fresh. This journey is one that I've been on with my Mariners team while preparing for this episode. We knew that it would be exciting to share the story of Lieutenant William and Susan Hinn and their yacht Galatea racing in the sixth America's Cup. This stunning work by beloved maritime artist James Edward Buttersworth came to the museum with this attribution. But this is not a painting of that race. It started with a question from one of our curators, Jean, who is a source of knowledge within the museum on America's Cup history. While she was double checking a line regarding part of the race, she found something odd. Galatea's hull is the wrong color in the painting. Red flag. She alerted our team and we dove in, but more and more she picked apart the narrative in the painting. We arrived at the center of that tangle and knew that the original attribution was wrong. So from there, we pivoted. Jean began to return to primary sources, eyewitness newspaper accounts and photos of the race, to books and online sources, and even to one of the world's leading experts on America's Cup history. And everything pointed to a new story. Two pairs of sister ships, two challenges for the Cup, two America's Cup races in New York Harbor, one year apart. The American pair Puritan and Mayflower, the English pair Janesta and Galatea, taking into account that Buttersworth painting has included a bit of artistic liberty and several inaccuracies. We now believe that this is not a race from the sixth America's Cup in 1886, but instead the first race of the fifth America's Cup, which occurred on September 14, 1885. During this race, the other set of sister ship competitors, Puritan and Janesta, raced in similar conditions with a similar outcome. Puritan managed to beat out the English challenger defending the cup. This work captures that action in the race as Puritan rounds the Sandy Hook lightship with only a slight lead over Janesta. So where do we go from here? Onward. There's beauty in being wrong, something that's reflected in Buttersworth's work. Even if it does depict the 1885 race as we currently believe, Buttersworth has still gotten several elements wrong. Subtle differences in the sail colors, the details of one of the hulls, the yacht's proportions, and the owner's private signal flag on the yacht in the foreground. It's not perfect, and it's likely not an eyewitness account as we thought it could be. But that's okay. We can learn from it and appreciate it for what it is, a story and a work of art. We're not perfect either. We get things wrong sometimes, but it's a part of our charge and our purpose here at the Mariners to seek the truth to not be complacent and blindly accept the information that is presented to us. We are called to question, to read, research, and recatalog, to learn, discover, and grow. And that is exactly what we're gonna keep doing.
So, Jean, we've been on a little bit of a wild ride with this painting. But before we kind of dive into the process that led to this reattribution, can you tell us a little bit about the America's Cup history? The America's Cup is the world's oldest international competition. It started after an innovative American yacht entered and won a race against boats of Britain's Royal Yacht Squadron in 1851. The trophy won by America was donated to the New York Yacht Club to be used as a perpetual trophy in a sailing competition between foreign nations. And the competition to possess that big silver cup is still going on today. And that's a story that folks can come to the museum and learn about in our Speed and Innovation Gallery, yeah? Yeah, guests to the museum can experience the thrill of the America's Cup, and they can learn about all the astounding technologies that are used to design and sail the contest's racing yachts. So let's bring it back to the piece, to the big question. Why are we here today? Can you tell us what sort of stuck out to you at first and, and sort of the journey that we've been on? While we were reviewing the script for the episode, I realized that the descriptions of Galatea in the newspaper and books that I was reading were a little bit different from the painting. Most of the sources stated that the hulls of Mayflower and Galatea were white in the 1886 race, while our painting very clearly shows a boat with a black hull. So I did a quick survey of photographs in our collection and that really convinced me that the boat in our painting couldn't be Galatea. So what was your next step from there? I continued researching and I learned that there were only three other races sailed by single-masted cutters in the history of the America's Cup. And only one of those races featured boats with the right hull shape and colors, and those boats matched our painting. And at this point, we began to theorize that our painting actually depicted the 1885 contest between Puritan and Genesta. So the painting might actually show an America's Cup race that happened one year earlier than we originally thought? We believe so, yes. But Buttersworth painting does include some features that made me a little unsure of this, this new attribution, namely the presence of so many schooners and sloops sailing in the background. This made me wonder if the scene might portray a New York Yacht Club regatta. And whenever my research kind of hits a wall like this and it involves the New York Yacht Club and the America's Cup, I always turn to my friend Steve Sachia for help. Steve is a very knowledgeable America's Cup and New York Yacht Club historian. So what did Steve think? Steve had a few ideas after looking at photographs of the painting. And the first thing that he noticed was that the boats in the foreground aren't flying national flags like the boats that are in the background. And to him, this suggested that the scene showed a matrix. He also noted that the rig and the hull design of the boats shows that they are circa 1880s and that the black hulled boat actually has a number of features that indicate that it's British. So taking all of this into account, Steve agreed with our theory that the painting depicts the 1885 America's Cup match between Puritan and Genesta. And then after reading the original uh, accounts of the two race days, I learned that the race on September 16th used a course that didn't include the Sandy Hook lightship. And this convinced me the painting can only depict the midpoint of the September 14th, 1885 race. Wow, okay, so we possibly have a whole new attribution and maybe even a whole new story to tell. Um, but that's what's so exciting about this really, isn't it? Like we, we now have the opportunity to continue in our research and to tell the story, which is such an important part of, of the work that we do here. And that's gonna continue, yeah? yeah? Exactly. I learn new things about the objects in our collection every single day. And making sure that the information that we put out into the world is factual is one of the most important things that mariners can do. It was a 2021 survey by the American Alliance of Museums that learned that museums are the number one trusted source of information in the United States. So increasing our understanding of the objects in our collection is always one of our highest priorities. And we're just gonna keep doing that, right? Definitely. Awesome, thank you.